you on how this affects women. Well, I actually believe that the reason that women are targeted, and I know that the reason that children are targeted, is because they're more compliant patients. Men aren't as compliant to take pills as women are, and they definitely, women aren't even as compliant as children are, because what happens is children are forced to take their medications by their parents and by the, the school personnel. And so you And they don't know how to complain. That's, well, even if they do complain, they're a child, they don't know how to intellectually communicate what's happening to them, what the side effects are, are or the symptoms they're experiencing. And so that's the reason that women and children are targeted by the pharmaceutical manufacturers. The children, per se, though, are the largest growth potential that the industry has because we are maxing out. The, ma the marketplace is becoming saturated with drugs. And so they're constantly looking for new places to push their pills. And again, children are the excellent, the best, and the most profitable area to push your pills because, first of all, it's a maintenance drug, so it's a long-term drug that you're going to have to take lifelong and they will tell you that. The first thing they tell you when they put you on an antidepressant is that you will probably have to take this for the rest of your life. And the truth is that if you buy into that you will because you will become addicted to the drugs very shortly and the withdrawal is hell for most people if you've been on them long term. Well, medical doctors we've interviewed have who are against these drugs say, listen, you better get with a medical doctor and have a special regimen to get off of these. Absolutely. Because, I mean, this is a lot worse than even heroin or something. This deals with the very chemical foundation of the brain. It isn't like heroin or cocaine that just hits certain chemicals, certain receptors. This changes the entire chemistry outlay of the entire brain. That's correct, and they are also neurotoxic in large doses. And there's about 10% of the population that has a defective liver enzyme known as the cytochrome P450, and that's where the majority of these drugs are metabolized. So you have a very large population of people that say, such as myself, if you react to one drug negatively and they put you on another drug and compound that, you can very quickly get a neurotoxic combination of drugs that pass the blood-brain barrier. Because the psychotropics are all made up of the, basically the same molecule structure. Yes, yes, that's correct. And so, you know, that's the reason why that um, this, this is such a, a prevalent problem. I mean, we have in 2005, there were over 50 million prescriptions written for antidepressants in this country. I mean, th that's a pretty huge number if you think about it. Pretty soon, all of us are, are not going to have any higher thinking abilities or any, you know, we're all going to be dealing with emotional ability, everyone who's on, on these products. So, I mean, I think it's really something that we need to be aware of, not just with our children, because this is where the issue is really getting the most attention right now. But these drugs do the exact same things to adults that they do to children. It's just that children's physiology, their biology is different, they're developing, so therefore they're, they are potentially more likely to have adverse drug reactions with any kind of pharmaceutical. They're three times more likely. Uh, Robert Mansour wrote, now, now, you produced this film. When you're making it, did you ever think of like Brave New World where the government makes everyone take drugs or THX 1138? I mean, do you ever just think, well, this is like the Twilight Zone. I can't believe that, that this is happening, that, that, that this is this big, that, uh, that all of this is going on. Oh, absolutely. The more, the more we spent filming it, the more we learned. And it's just, it just blew my mind. Incredible. And like I said, I, you know, I had no idea whatsoever. They know what they're doing. Uh, the drug companies come up with something that will make you go crazy, make you have more problems. In every case I've heard, you, they get you on one. What the average is four drugs they get you on by the end of it. And you're a complete basket case. And by the end of it, you really are crazy. And so they've got a pill they push. I, I saw an article a few years ago where they mail out millions of free samples of Prozac into people's uh, 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 homes into their mailboxes. I mean, this is something that its molecules very similar to LSD, and it's in your mailbox, but then the cops will raid your house with a black mask wearing SWAT team looking for street LSD, but we're going to push this on kids? Alex, think about this. The drug manufacturers are actually creating their own markets for their drugs, and, and I have this in my book. I document this where I was actually told this at a sales meeting where we were creating the market for the next drug that was in the pipeline. And oh, wait a minute. Tell me about this. So you take, for example, a, a company like Eli Lilly who has a drug like Prozac, and then Prozac is known to induce psychosis. Then their, their number one seller, Prozac, goes off patent, and then what becomes their number one seller after that? 
the drug for psychosis, Zyprexa. So they've created their own market for the next best seller, the next b blockbuster drug. And that drug sold $5.8 billion in this country in 2004. So I mean, are there that many psychotic people around unless you create psychosis? No, there aren't. And then Zyprexa is also known to induce diabetes in patients. What's the number two profit maker that Eli Lilly makes? Their diabetes drugs. Diabetes, in fact, they did a study. Americans are not consuming more sugar and fat than they were 10 years ago. We've been eating like pigs forever. Suddenly, everybody, I mean, how many thousands of percent has diabetes gone up? And now they have all these new types. And then so many times it's linked to people on these drugs. These drugs cause endocrine disorders, yes. And, you know, another thing, too, I learned is that a lot of these, half of these kids were prescribed it for off-label use. And that's what they do. You know, if you have anxiety, which is not depression, we're going to give you Zoloft. Even though Zoloft is meant for depression, it's approved for an off-label use. And it's the same with Paxil. That's, that's correct. So. And that's a very, very common practice. And that's what they use people like myself, a former drug rep, to go in and do is we get opinion leaders in the medical community and we get them to use it for that particular thing and then get them to say they had success with right. it and then bam yeah. I've got the name to go around drop with every doctor in town to tell them oh Dr. So-and-so who is the doctor that they admire or refer to or whatever is doing this and thus you get this huge off-label yeah. thing going on. And you know what's funny you know um, last year when I was filming it I went for my physical for my doctor and I, I figured I'll tell my doctor about this get his opinion on it and he he closed the door, he told the nurse to go away, and for 20 minutes he was telling me how these drugs are good for people, how there's no problem with them. Of course, his son was on the his son was on the antidepressant. That's what happens is people get so invested in this, it's, it's like a Nazi death camp operator. They're not going to admit that what they're doing is bad, they're going to make excuses for it. Uh, I tell you, prescription suicide, you can go, of course, to the website and uh, get it. We'll tell you about that website in just a second. And uh, Gwen, how do we get a copy of Confessions of an RX Drug Pusher? I guess you go to iUniverse.com. Uh, That's one of these great self-publishing uh, sites. Got a lot of other great books. Mike Hansen's uh, Bohemian Grove book uh, he wrote uh, was uh, published by them. Very professional outfit, and people can get a copy there of Confessions of an RX Drug Pusher. And I would imagine now Amazon and others have it. It's uh, by Gwen Olson. Both of you, tell us about the movie. Tell us about the book. Well, the book is available, as you said, on uh, iUniverse.com, Amazon.com, Barnes & Nobles, pretty much all of the dot-coms that carry um, self-published books. And you can get it also off of my website, GwenOlson.com, and I also encourage any listeners that wanted to talk to me personally or relay their stories to me that they can also leave me a message on that site, GwenOlson.com. Robert, how do folks get a copy of your new movie? There's two ways to do it. You can go to the PrescriptionSuicide.com website, and we're taking pre-orders. We should be shipping in about two weeks. Also, you can log on to participatenow.net, and that's a website that we created for uh, people who want to have screenings of it, who want more information about the drug. There's tons of links to resources there, and you can get your community screening going if you want, and you can order the uh, DVD there, and it's just a fantastic website. Robert, I want you to tell the story about South by Southwest, which will have the most mindless films you can imagine showing at it. Uh, they're blocking your film. You're an, you're an Emmy Award winner. You've got all these awards, uh, and, and they're just saying, hey, we don't want it, but not just this film festival. Others are. Is that fear of the big RX boys? I, I think it is. You know, I, I'll be honest with you. I've been, I've been in the industry for almost... 13 years, and, and I had never heard of half these film festivals that are out here. I never heard of South by Southwest. So what we did was a way of getting the film out was we thought we'd go to the festival circuit. The first uh, festival we screened at was the Fort Lauderdale International Film Festival, which embraced the film. We uh, premiered it there. It was a sellout crowd. Better yeah, let's be clear. Real film festivals won it. I mean, you've had your other films at Sundance. You've won the highest awards in the country, but the little pathetic Lewis Black, no way. Right. Actually, you know, uh, at, the, at the screening, at the premiere at Fort Lauderdale, we had eight attorneys fly from across the country. One of them was from a pharmaceutical company. Interesting, <laughs> isn't it? So um, we've entered quite a few festivals and basically have been turned down. And I got upset at one, one so I decided to call him up. And I won't mention any names. It's Sonoma. But um, <laughs> he, told me, he emailed me back saying, you know what, your film is uh, it's too heavy. It's artless. We like artsy films, films with visual effects. And I'm like, this is a documentary. 
I mean, if there, there are kids killing themselves. What is the problem here? And I think it's just a too heavy of a film for these festivals. And, you know, I look at the roster of what they had last year in 